And welcome back to the Profile Pod. Ladies and gentlemen, appreciate you being here. I'm your host, Double A, and we're back for another spectacular episode of the pod. This is the podcast that brings on individuals doing extraordinary things in life to inspire the human spirit. And tonight, our guest is no exception to that. Um, I, I want to remind you that this is an interactive conversation. So if you'd like to present a question to our guest or myself, go ahead and post that in, in the comments and I'll do the best I can to uh, present it on the screen and give you a, a little shout out as well. So we, might, we wanna make this interactive, ladies and gentlemen. So thanks again for tuning in, wherever you're tuning in from. We're live here on the Profile Pod with Double A. So uh, let's go ahead and bring on our guest, man. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm very, very proud of uh, thus far of, of all the guests I've been able to bring on, man. Because again, I bring on uh, people who are, are are just gonna inspire. Bottom line, man. Bottom line, man. That's what I try to do. That's what I aim with this podcast, with this, with my interviews, man. Is I want, I want someone to, to, to try something. I want you, to, I want the audience to be out there and try something new, something they've always wanted to try. You know, I don't care what it is, man. Um, you know, take that first step. Take action. Take imperfect action, okay? Even if you don't have a slightest clue what the hell you're doing, take that first step, just like this, man, with, with myself as an example. I've been doing this almost four years, and I didn't I didn't know how to interview anyone, man, when I, when I first started. I, I didn't know the slightest thing about interviewing or podcasting or whatever. But I, I said, you know what? I'm going to do it. I took the first step, and I did my due diligence, and, and here we are, man. I, I feel a lot better than where I started four, almost four years ago. So here we go. Like I said, man, this gentleman hails from, originally from, from the state of Arizona, the Grand Canyon State. Um, he is doing his thing right now, man. He's, he's done a lot of uh, projects. Uh, he's an actor. He's a producer. He's a writer. And super impressed with him, man, because I'm an actor myself. And I look up to this guy, man. I, I, I pick his brain. I, I study him, I observe him, and, you know, I, I uh, and that's the way it should be, man. You know, I, I should be looking up to guys like him because I'm trying to get where he's at right now, straight up. And uh, this gentleman has uh, released a, a film called Preggers earlier this year. He wrote, he produced it, and he starred in it. And uh, he's got a lot of other projects that he's done, and he's got some upcoming projects. And we're going to get into all the good stuff, man. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, his first time on the podcast, let's give it up for my man, Marco Barra. What is up, brother? How are you? Hey, what's up, Double A? Man, what an introduction. Thank you, man. That's humbling. Oh, man, of course, of course, man. It's all about you, man. And, th and thank you for, for being here. I appreciate you, brother. Uh, what's been up with you, man? Nah, well, you. A, thank you. No, nah, it's an honor to be on, and I appreciate you having me on. I love what you're doing. I love what you who you talk to on the podcast, and the fact that it's about inspiration. You know, for me, that's that's huge. You know what I mean? Because I try to spread and inspire uh, just everyone that I can. You know what I'm saying? So, Absolutely, bro. I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, no, no doubt, no doubt. Marco, that, that's what it's all about, man. You know, I think that's what it's all about. I, I for me, you know, I, I, um, I, I want to inspire and, and, and share and, and connect with the world and connect with others. And at the same time, learn, you know, learn myself, you know, about, about different, uh, you know, uh, ways of life, different in industries, different uh, spaces, you know, from acting to producing to, to, to writing poems to uh, entrepreneurship and, and et cetera, et cetera, brother. So, Man, I, I love that because I feel like inspiration is a, a huge uh, ingredient in being successful no matter what like uh, career you're in or what you're trying to do with your life. Because uh, when you aim to inspire others or you allow yourself to be inspired by others, it just opens up a whole new world. You know what I'm saying? Like for me, when I started acting, you know, uh, you know, I was very much like competitive and like, ah, well, why this fool get that? Like, why didn't I get that? Like, I should be doing that. But then when I started saying, oh, you know what? That's dope that this guy got that. Like, good for him. You know, how can I get to where he's at? How can I talk to him and see maybe he's doing something different that I'm not doing instead of being like, oh, well, I'm better than him or I'm better than them. You know, 
that that really opens up your mind and opens up your whole world to just so many possibilities and and i mean like my pops would always say you could learn from the village idiot you know what i'm saying if you allow yourself to listen <laughs> that's good thing too man <laughs> that's wise man that's wise yeah, you know i had a, i had an issue with that too marco uh, uh, shout out to uh real quick man uh, ralph esparza is in the house how you doing ralph he's, he's in the comment section Wanna Ralph, get that's my guy we're working we're working together I know, uh, on man. a project I, right now so we're very excited about that uh, yeah i love ralph man great guy I got to meet him at the uh at the uh for lawrence production the screen special screening private screening yeah. Yeah, the stationary yeah. bike and a uh, big shout out to ralph so great to have you here buddy shout out ralph definitely man and uh but yeah like like i was saying man it's uh you know, I used to do. I used to have issues with that myself too, Marco. It, just in life in general, like oh, you know, people my age, oh, you know what? I used to compare myself a mm -hmm. lot, mm -hmm. and and you just can't do that, man. You can't do comparison that. is the killer of joy. Mm. You know, what you, I'm can't, you can't. Yeah, you know, you can't worry about things you have no control over. Nah, you, can't, you just can't. You're right. You know, I'm I'm a terrible golfer, but I always. Uh, I always say that life or even acting is like is like golf, right? You're not competing against others. You're really just competing against yourself. So it's really, you know what I'm saying? Like no one's guarding you like in basketball or in football. There's no defense. It's really you, your brain, and your game, you know, and, and, and it, it's up to you. So I really feel like that, that applies to, to life. Absolutely, brother. No doubt about that, man. It's, uh, you know, I was listening to this other uh, podcast earlier. A guy was a, a former prof uh, professional baseball player. And uh, he was saying that you're not really facing the pitcher when you're up to bat. You know, it's, it's, it's the, you're facing the ball and you're, yeah. really, you're really facing yourself, man, when you're up to bat. You know, and uh, I was like, wow, that was, that's, that's pretty, you know, I've never heard a baseball player say that. And he, you know, he was 12 years in the big leagues. Wow. Uh, but uh, but yeah, man, we we we're our own uh, great. We're you know we're competing against ourselves at the end of the day. You know, how driven are we? How, how motivated are we? You know, how, that that's all that's all we can control is ourselves, man. Our, our, yeah, own, man. our own productivity and, and what have you. That's it. That's it. You know, other people are holding us back from uh, from reaching our goals. It's only ourselves. You know. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, brother. And, Man, so you, you hail from Arizona originally, right, Marco? Yeah, AZ. AZ. <laughs> a border yeah. town called Nogales. So it's uh, Sonora and Arizona, uh, and both sides is called Nogales. So uh, that's where I was born and raised. And then I moved out to L.A. in 2000, uh, 2003, actually. And I've been here ever since. Did you come out to, to to act, or were you were you just coming out for for school, or what? what, yeah, what was your no, I, coming out? yeah, I came out to act. So uh, I got accepted into the American Academy of Dramatic Arts, which is in Hollywood. And uh, yeah, man, I I drove up. Well, first I drove up in the audition in a in a van that we rented from like Hertz, from like with the. Uh, <laughs> seven other people in my family right except my tío my tía my primos we all because we we so they all came up with me we roll up in a white van up to the school for my audition <laughs> and uh yeah no windows. Uh, what, what are those no, uh, nah. no windows on the van no windows on the van like you know <laughs> It was the rental. We were staying in San Diego. We, we were taking a vacation, and everyone wanted to come out to support me on my audition. So it was like probably the most Mexican thing that had ever happened at that school. <laughs> uh, and uh, yeah, so I got accepted into into the school, and then uh, that's that September. Uh, that was in the summer, like I think that was in May, and then that that September uh, I I made the move and. Uh, I moved out in a two bedroom apartment with five other dudes and uh so began the journey in Los Angeles. <laughs> yeah, man, that's that's yeah, that, like Ralph just mentioned that would be a great scene in the movie, man. And uh <laughs> but you know uh how did how did you get into what what what, what how did acting come about for you, Marco? I mean, you grew up in Arizona, you know, Gallus. Mm -hmm. Uh you're pretty far from Hollywood. You're pretty, you know, I mean, you're you're next door to California. 
But uh, talk about some of that, uh, some of those inspirations, influences. How did what led you to to um, to the craft of acting? Man, I, I it, it's close in proximity, Arizona and and LA, but the the industry of acting and entertainment is universes away from where I'm from. Like nobody viewed acting or entertainment as an actual career path or a job that that one could actually have right and mm -hmm. the arts and the arts really where i'm from is not promoted is really more sports and so i really growing up I, uh you know i'm short but i was a baller i played basketball uh it was my first passion my first love and uh so i i i would that was all i really did was play basketball but in class and on the bus i would come up with like all these different like uh, impressions of our teachers in class and like I would make up characters and I would just make everyone laugh in class and in the bus like I was the jokester the class clown and I eventually got in trouble uh because of I was, because I was doing that and uh my teacher Mr. McNulty he was like man you know what you either gonna get detention or you can join the play that I'm directing and I was like uh dang well, that play sounds way more fun than <laughs> detention. So I'll, I'll do the play. And yeah. then I'll tell you what, the first the first time I stood up on, on that stage and said something and had the whole crowd laughing, I, that was it for me, man. That was it. And one of my teachers, I remember one of the teachers coming back and saying, man, you should see your parents in the front row. They were so proud of you. And that was it, man. What does any kid ever want is their parents to be proud of them. So. It all that combined, it was like, boom, this is it. And yep. man, I was stuck on it ever since. So you got the hook, you, you were hooked immediately. I mean, oh, yeah, I was hooked right away, right away. Gosh, man. Yeah. And, and, and how old were you then at that, at that moment? I was in eighth grade, so I was 13. Oh. Yeah, I was 13. I see. And then from there, did you get into acting? Like, did you join drama in high school and et cetera? So from there, like in, in high school, uh, I took acting class. I took drama class, but I was never, in, I never took the step of being in drama club. Like I would just take the class and I was still, I was still playing basketball. And by that time I was actually about 200 pounds, not fit. Like I was heavy, overweight, 200 pounds, five, six. And so my game was suffering, you know, and it was like, it was like, man, you know, I don't think I'm going to make it to the NBA. Uh, I better start thinking about what else I'm going to do. And that's when I was like, you know, I still have this passion for acting. Like, I'm going to go full, full all in. I'm just going all the way in. And so I quit the basketball team. I joined drama and I, I auditioned for the first for my very first play, which turned out to be Weenie the Pooh. Oh. And uh, I booked I booked the job of Weenie the Pooh. So you imagine all my friends in the basketball team had to come out and 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 uh, heckle my ass at the play. <laughs> <laughs> of course, man. You know, hey, and and I I I fully rode with it. I was like, yeah, and I was like, I'm, hey, I don't care, man. Like, I love doing this, and you know, y'all can laugh if you want. It's all good. And no, I, I actually got a lot of respect after that. They're like, dang, Barra, like, you actually went up there and did it and wore that funny costume and you didn't care? That's what's up, you know? So I started getting respect from everybody because I did it. So that was just another thing that kept me, like, pulling forward. And, uh, yeah, I just kept falling in love with it more and more. And, and then uh, I went to a year of community college, and I was lost, you know? I was like, yeah, I, I fell in love with the... Uh, my psychology class because I, f I found out that I really like human behavior and, and 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 observing that and I think that's why it went into the acting right and uh, and then so I told my my I took drama class in college too but I told my my uh, teacher I was like you know what I think I'm just gonna pack up and go to LA see what happens and he's like Ugh. he's like I don't, I don't know if that's a good idea and I was like yeah 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 no nah, it'll be cool. <laughs> I didn't want to hear. I wasn't trying to hear it. I was like, I'm gonna do it, and yeah, man, I made I made the jump, and it That's, was worth it. Damn. So, how old were you when you came out here, man? When you when you first came out to? Uh, to I was uh 18, 18, about to turn nineteen. 
Wow. And uh, yeah, I didn't know anybody. I didn't have any friends or any family in the industry. I nobody had ever been an actor as far as I knew in my family or really anyone in my town. So yeah. <laughs> it was just really let's see what happens. I, I mean, I I, I had this blind kind of uh, just uh, optimism that it's just gonna work out. It's just going to work out. And, I, you know, I figured, you know, one, two, three years, I'm going to be a celebrity. Like, <laughs> Of course. And that, yeah, you know, you have these. Uh, but I think you have to have that, that you have to have the, that kind of a mentality going into it because it's such an unrealistic career to begin with. It really is. The, the numbers are against you. The reality of the people that actually make a living from doing this is very low. So if you don't have that type of blind, just optimism, you might not even, you know, make the jump to, to even try to do it, you know? So you just have to even just have that, 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 that ignorance, ignorance is bliss. Yeah. No, you're right, man. I think that the, 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 you got to have your confidence at a high level, you know, it, it's the mindset. The mindset is critical, man. And once if you go into a uh, you go into it with a mindset that's maybe defeating that you're done you're done right? man you're done i mean people ask me all the time that aren't in the business like i'll be like oh yeah i had an audition today they're like oh yeah you think you, you you're gonna get it i'm like yeah i think i'm gonna get every single audition i go to because why wouldn't i if i didn't then i should just pack it up and go home yeah right <laughs> wow. yeah definitely man and so when you were when you were out here 18 years old you know, in in Hollywood, man, you're you're you're, you're trying to break into the business. Uh, how were you supporting yourself, man? Were you were you working uh, different jobs or talk about that a little bit? Woo! Yeah, no, it was it was it was rough. It was rough goings in the beginning, man. I'm not gonna lie. Um, you know, at, at, in the very beginning, I did have you know help from family, but once you know, when I I was young and immature when I when I first came out here, so you know, I, I got caught up in you know the hollywood life and and going out and partying and you know i was living i was living the a-lister life before i had even gotten one job you know what i mean and that was just my that was my just uh immaturity and uh but i you know i, I had jobs at like staples blockbuster um man what else did i i worked at a ymca i, I had all kinds of crazy job I, I, yeah. I worked at i worked at a theater which is actually cool because and then i got to watch a lot of free movies so that 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 was cool but uh yeah it was a lot of those odd jobs that like are soul crushing too because you know you tell your manager like yeah you know i'm, I'm an actor so i might get some auditions they're like oh yeah, yeah sure kid whatever <laughs> like just make sure you get your your shift covered you know like, all right yeah <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> they, don't give, they don't give a shit about you yeah, no doubt, man. No doubt. So, so t tell us about the first gig you you landed, man. You, you you know you landed it. You tell us about that experience, man. How excited were you? Oh, for sure. Uh, take us back. Um. Well, so before I got an agent, like uh, before uh, I was able to find one, I I actually got caught in that trap of somebody charging me to be in their agency and they were, so they're like oh yeah you just pay like 500 bucks and da, 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 whatever yeah. and i was about to do it you know a friend of mine i told my friend oh yeah i'm about to go you know pay to get in this agency and she's like wait a minute what, what do you mean you're gonna pay and i said yeah they, you know you pay and then they send you out on audition and she's like no 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 that's not how it works you know you never pay an agent unless they get you a job right and mm. so she's like let me introduce you to so uh my agent and it's all right fine so i go i meet this guy he's like hey, i had this little old dude on robertson boulevard in this office he's like hey uh marco i'm gonna take you on you know da, 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 whatever <laughs> so he started he started sending me out on auditions and then quickly after that because i spoke spanish i booked i booked a, a track phone commercial track phone are those phones that you pay as you go you know you find them yeah. like 7-eleven or whatever <laughs> I'm, I'm supposed to I'm supposed to play this uh older brother bully and uh man it was a disaster it was a straight disaster I, I you know my first job I was nervous 
I had movements within the, you know, I had to lift the weights and say one line. I had to get my little brother in a, in a headlock and give him a noogie and say another line. And then I had to move over and start lifting a, a, and saying another line. And I just couldn't do it. I couldn't do it, man. I, I was not there. And I remember one of the, the crew members coming up to me and there was a, a bike rim on this table on set. It had a bunch of spokes. Mm. he said you see all these spokes and i was like yeah he's like that's everyone here at the production right now and i was like okay and he's like you're one of those spokes we need you in order to get this whole thing running you know what i'm saying so yeah, yeah. he's like hey get on it bro <laughs> and that hey that was an incredible lesson for me i mean a lot of time a lot of people might have been like you know what i'm not cut out for this shit. and oh. it was bad it was bad it was bad uh Wait. yeah and, and so you know i got i got through it they helped me out you know they figured it out they shot it in a certain way i got through it and for some reason it didn't like sway me from saying ah, i'm not good enough i just said all right well no, i'm to the next one <laughs> and i just kept going and i just kept getting better as i kept going you know like you could take classes all day you could take uh -huh. classes for years but the experience of being on a set and having a crew who's there who wants to get home to their kids to their wives to their lives uh, who are getting paid minimal, who aren't getting any of the glory. Uh, you know, there's pressure on you to perform and get your, your work done. It's a professional set. It's not playtime. You know what I mean? And so really that, that, that lesson, that lesson was invaluable for me. You know, it, it's way better than if I would have just gone and everything would have ran smoothly because I really got a crash course on what it's really like to be on set. And that, that was, I'm, I'm forever, forever grateful for that. So, you know, there's never a failure. There's never a, a loss. You know what I mean? It's always a lesson of how do you could get better and you always learning. That's the thing, you know, you're always learning. So it's all right to mess up. Sometimes it's a good thing to mess up, you know? Yeah, absolutely. If you, I mean, if you're fail, if, if you're afraid to fail, you're afraid to succeed, man. Yeah, yeah my, my friend always says, and I love this, you, you have, she says, uh, they have the guts to suck. And I mm. like that. Because when you have the guts to suck, that means you got the guts to get better. I love that, man. I, you know, and I've always been afraid of failure myself, uh, Marco. Uh, I, I've always been so hard on myself. I can't, I can't, I can't fail. I can't, you know, with, yeah. even with this, uh, with anything and in general in life, man. And, uh, you, you know, you you want to get things right, of course. You want to do things Absolutely. the right way, and, but uh, failure is feedback, man. I heard that. Re I heard that uh, yesterday. Failure is feedback, man, and it's not really failing because it's it's a process, you know. It's Absolutely, your, you're, you're learning from that. So when you flip, when you reframe that, when you're at, when you fail, quote unquote fail, it's actually mm -hmm. a positive, man, because Absolutely. you're learning from it. You're taking some from that. that so. It's, it's, yeah, it's a great, and it's I all about, it, again, goes back to the mindset, right? Absolutely. I think if you're not failing, you're not trying hard enough. That's true, man. Yeah. Absolutely, Absolutely man. So, so, so you, you, from 2004 on to, you know, fast forward, man, what, did this, what, talk about when you started gaining traction and you, as an actor and you started really, you know, booking more roles and you started realizing like, oh, you know, this is this is legit. Now I'm, I'm I'm I'm. This is actually, you know, you started seeing the the fruits of your labor. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, t tell us a little bit about the, the, that process, man. So you know, I, I I've been hitting. You know, I was hit and miss. I was booking some things and and not booking a lot of other things. And then uh, there was a long stretch where you know the only opportunities I was really getting was commercials and I wasn't really like you know for me the goal is film and television so mm. uh I wasn't getting those type of opportunities and when I was it wasn't really roles that were for me you know because the industry at that time wasn't as inclusive as it is now you know it, it was basically you're a cholo you're a gangbanger <laughs> you're a drug dealer you're uh you know a jardinero which is all cool all good i just 
casting didn't see me as that. So then I, I started, you know, I started writing. I, I wrote a series, uh, a web series called Chasing Skirts, which is a comedy about, you know, one heartbroken dude and his best friend trying to uh, get him girls so he could, you know, be happy again uh, after like a, a, a traumatic breakup. And uh, after that, like, I just started gaining so much uh, more confidence within myself. Like, I felt so empowered because I was like, yo, I don't have to wait for anybody really to give me a job. Like, I could actually do what I love to do on my own terms. Mm. And once I started getting that, my confidence started just blooming. And now when I go into an audition, it was like, I'm not, I'm not thirsty for this job. The thing is that a lot of times actors aren't bad. They're just too thirsty. And when you're very thirsty, you know, casting, it just turns people off. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? So when yeah. you walk in, in a, with, in a, in a mindset of, I deserve to be here. I'm coming here because I'm coming to offer you something, my mm -hmm. perspective, my view on what, this character is or what the script is and 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 if i don't get this it's cool because i got my other series that i'm doing you know maybe it's not gonna be on fox but i'm still doing the thing you know so for me that really like that gave me just the confidence and the wings to just start flying and after that it was like things just started I didn't even I wasn't even really trying so hard and it was everything just started coming my way and it was like oh dang okay so it's really like Chris Rock said one time was like you know if your car is is broken down on the side of a road and you're just trying to wave people down to come help you no one's gonna stop but if people see you trying to push your car out the way people are gonna start to stop to help you oh wow you know what I'm saying so you got to take that initiative if you take that initiative you could you see that a lot of doors start opening for you and that that's that's what happened to me i mean and i was just like just it just came from frustration because i know for whatever reason uh you believe in god or whatever you believe in or you believe in like you know things are happen for a reason like for whatever reason i feel like this is the place for me this is the career for me this is my passion and like so it wasn't ever like, I'm going to quit. It was like, how do I figure out a way to like maneuver, you know, like what, how do, what pieces do I start shifting so that I could like start making way or make a lane for myself. And it was, yes. it was, it was writing for me. It was, it was writing and yeah, man, things have just taken off ever since. That's awesome, man. So yeah. So you, you, you like you said, I, I love what you said, man. You, it's not that it wasn't about like you weren't, you knew you weren't going to give up. You just needed to figure out a way. You, you had to make an adjustment in your approach, pretty much. Absolutely. Right? It's and, like a and, Rubik's. It's like a Rubik's cube. Sometimes you know. Sometimes all one side is yellow, but the other side, you know what I'm saying, is like, and you got to keep shifting and shaking until you like really find that perfect combination where it's like, boom, now I got it. No, I love that. I love that, man. And, and you know, they always say, "What's the definition?" of insanity right doing the same thing over and over expecting different results and <laughs> right right i think with, with with your with your story man you you were you were determined to figure out a way you know what's going to work and so you were trying different things and you know and i think like you, you figured uh you figured something out that worked for you and i think that's amazing man i think that's that's Thank the you. way it's, uh, that's a the great approach man i think uh there's something to Take, take from that from your story man and thanks man. ladies and gentlemen we're talking to marco parra actor writer producer uh so you know that you, you i mean your story bro it's just so inspirational because you came here i mean you, you had no contacts in the business no. i mean minimal acting experience uh you know it's a you're it's a testament to if you if you set yourself on on on, on the path on the goal uh, you can make it happen, and that, that's what it's all about, right there, man. And I, I love that. I love that. Thank you. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely, man. Um, um, I want to take a question here, uh, Marco. Um, it's from uh, Awesome. I'm going to post it right here. He said, uh, "Does Marco have past actors that he looks up to, or who would he like to work with this decade in a feature film?" 
Oh, nice. Shout out yeah. to Austin. <laughs> what up, awesome. Uh, awesome question. <laughs> uh, yes, uh, actors from the past. Uh, my, the biggest ones for me have always been Pacino and De Niro. Mm. Those were just like, as soon as I as soon as I saw their work, I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. like. I think I think the first movie that I watched that like really had me wanting to to act was Scarface. Actually, <laughs> I was like. I want to do this. Like, I not. I didn't want to be a, a drug lord. I just wanted to be up there, like Pacino, doing, you know, uh, crazy stuff. And uh, I think, uh, now I, I would love to, and we're gonna make this happen somehow. But I want to work with uh, with uh, Oscar Isaac, John Leguizamo, mm. and uh, prior Medica Ferreira. Yeah. Great names, man. That'd be great. Yeah. Great names. Diego yeah. Luna. <laughs> There's a lot. Who's There's that? a lot right now. Diego Luna? Yeah. He's a beast. Oh, man. It, 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 the list is endless, probably. I mean, it man. really is. Yeah. There's a lot of talent right now, man. There's a lot of Latino talent, too. I know. Which is amazing. It. Beautiful. I love it, man. I love it. Yeah. The, the doors are opening up. I think you and I, last time I saw you, uh, at, you know, we were kind of touching on that a little bit, how, you know, doors are definitely uh, opening up for Latino actors and, and more so than ever, and, which yeah. is great. Yeah, you know? no, no, it, it is. I mean, definitely not at the pace that we all would love it to be at, but um, we see the progress. And like I said, when I first moved out here and started acting, it was a lot worse, a lot worse. I mean, it was incredibly limited and, and uh, it was hard. It was really hard. So uh, seeing seeing the progress now, it, 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 it's exciting. You know what I'm saying? It's exciting. Absolutely, man. And that's why I have so much respect for some of those earlier actors, you know, from, from you know, decade, you know, even the 70s, 80s, some of those Latino actors, man, uh, who, who, who made it, you know, who quote unquote made it uh, on a grand scale, you know, and, and for example, Edward James Olmos comes to mind. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, guys like that, like, you know, John Leguizamo, uh, so guys like that, uh, Salma Hayek so, and, mm -hmm. and and so on. Um, yeah, yeah they, they paved the way. They really did, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Danny Trejo, man. Danny Trejo. He's one and, of the biggest stars in the world. Danny Trejo. And let that bring you back. Yeah. Well, you're off as far like as you What about Danny Trejo? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, I think I'll work with him very. Uh, hopefully, I'm hoping I'll work with him soon. Yeah, it was, he's just a he's a legend, man. Legend, legend. And I got to meet Danny Trejo at, at the Latin uh, Latin American Mo Motion Picture Awards back in April oh, on this way. year. Yeah, that super cool guy. I, I turn around, man. He's like, "Hey, how you doing? I'm I'm, I'm Danny." He just introduced himself to me. I was like, "Oh, I hey!" That, I shook his hand, took a picture with him, and it was a super cool guy, man. And He's got that reputation of just being like one of the nicest guys. I, 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 I had I had the uh, opportunity to meet him once briefly at uh, at the Highland Park uh, Film Festival actually a couple of years ago. Uh, and uh, man, he's just like a regular cool, cool guy around the just way. One of the guys, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. It, yeah, no doubt about it. And uh, Awesome's also asking about. What was it like? Uh, did you work with Pepe Serna? I did. <laughs> I did oh. work with Pepe Serna. <laughs> uh, that guy's a legend, man. He was incredible, and I, honestly, he was like completely different than what I because I my my experience with Pepe Serna was watching him on Scarface, uh, yeah. you know, Car Wash, uh, and American so when mean. I met him on this American, oh, American me, I mean, come on. Uh, but when I met him, the the film was very. Uh, it was it was like a surreal film, like a very like dark, very strange comedy. And he played this guru, and he was just like complete. He's a he's an artist. This dude is an artist. The way he dresses, the way he moves, he's just an artist, like an artist, avant garde type of like just 
his mind is 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 not what you would expect it to be. So that that was and it was incredible because actually us two summers before or maybe it was one summer before I actually worked with Pepe Serna, I was taken to Miami to uh Hispanicize this this big uh yeah. event. Yeah. So they took me out there because I did a commercial. I was one of the main characters in this commercial. It was called uh, uh, Honest Ernesto or whatever. So they're like, you want to go to Miami to this event? I was like, of course. And then they're like, oh, well, uh, actually, th there's a Scarface party at one of the mansions they shot uh, Scarface. And I, was, I mean, my mind was exploded. And wow. so I got to meet, I got to meet him and Steven Bauer uh, at this event. And a year later, I'm on set with this guy. I mean, it, it was it was just insane. It was insane. And I still, Pepe Serna is one of the most supportive uh, actors, just souls, just souls out there. And he's still to this day, like he remembers me. He, he I saw him at a, at a farm workers uh, benefit not too long ago. And he's on a show called With Love on uh, Amazon. Mm -hmm. And he introduced me to the producers. He he's like, yo, this is Marco. He's a great actor. I worked with him in the past. I was just like, man, Pepe, thank you so much. He's like, what? That's what people do. I'm like, no, no not just anybody. I was like, <laughs> not just anybody does that. And I, I'm, I'm grateful for him. Very grateful for him. You know, at that uh, that event, you know, where I met Danny Trejo, I I, I have a regret about that night, and it's this: uh, Pepe Serna was there too. Oh, yeah, I think he received an award that night. I want to say, and uh, so Danny Trejo and and Pepe Serna were like right there. You know, where they, it was like at the after party, right? And you know, I was like, man, I want to take a picture with both of these guys. You know. But I was I was too chicken, man. I'll be honest. I was too chicken. Uh, and uh, my my wife was with me. She's like, just go ask him here. Why don't? She kept trying to pull me. I was like, nah, I don't want to. I don't want to be a. I don't want to be like a, you know, fanboy or something like that. You know? <laughs> yeah, I get. And that. she's like, just go. I was like, oh man. And then I should have just gone. But I, I asked Danny, and uh, I think you know. Imagine I would have had a picture with Danny and Pepe. You know, I was like, oh, oh. man, oh man, I blew it. I blew it, bro. Ah, yo, yo, man, I feel like you'll get that opportunity again. Thank you. Yeah, no doubt. And man. next time yeah. you're going to take it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, but yeah, Pepe, like you said, he's an artist, man, through and through. He, oh, he, recited, a, he recited a poem that night, man, beautiful poem on stage, and, and it was great, man. And, uh, just a, yeah, stand-up guy and just another legend, that, you know. Absolutely. Was, his actual artwork, his paintings are beautiful as well. He actually paints and it's amazing. Beautiful. Unreal, man. Unreal. But, but yeah, Marco. So fast forward, man. I mean, let's talk about Preggers, man. Preggers is your yeah. uh, one of your latest uh, projects. You, you you wrote it, you mm -hmm. starred in it, you produced it. Uh, and I, I want to see this film, man. It looks amazing. I posted the the, the preview, the trailer. Um, take us back to the beginning of that process, man. What? How did you? What, I mean, how did Preggers come about? What inspired it? Whose idea was it, and all that good stuff, man? Uh, thank you, by the way. Um, <laughs> uh, in, in 2018, uh, Arkansas started implementing uh, stricter abortion laws in their state, and so there was a lot of uproar about it. A lot of people started talking about it because it it, it had been a while since Roe v. Wade that. You know, they, they were conjuring up a lot of this conversation again uh, because of that. And uh, I started hearing uh, people saying, you know, if guys got pregnant, there'd be an abortion clinic on every corner. And I thought that was kind of funny. You know, I was like, man, what if dudes got pregnant? Like, what would it be like? And so uh, the idea came to me of like, yeah, like, what if a dude knew what it was like to be pregnant? Would we still think the same? Will we still, as politicians, implement these type of laws? Would we? I don't know. That's just the question. Mm. It was just a question that was in my mind, and I thought, why not? The only movie I'd ever seen with a pregnant man was Arnold Schwarzenegger in <laughs> Junior. And so I was like, you know what? Why not? I, we need more pregnant men up in here. 
so uh yeah so that's how that 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 story actually started and, and the idea started and then i started writing it and man i actually it took me probably about a month or less to get the get it written written out and then through you know uh uh some amazing consultants that i had i, I you know i brought women on to like kind of tell me their experiences and 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 share their thoughts and I, I brought all that together and wrote this script. And, uh, you know, it, this was prior to uh, the pandemic. So uh, it was sitting there for a while. And then uh, in 20, wait, well, I just, uh, January, I think it was 2021, uh, I reached out to uh, to Sylvia Ray, who was, a, who was eventually turned out to direct it. I was, I just you know I just took a shot in the dark because she had been doing amazing work. She does like so many fellowships and has been a part of so many uh, film uh, festivals with her work. I was like, man, she would be great. I'm just gonna take a shot in the dark and see what happens. And wow. she loved the script and she's like, let's do it. And I was like, oh shit, okay, <laughs> we're actually uh, we're actually gonna do this, okay. That's and cool. uh, man, and this was like in the height of the pandemic, so it was. Uh, you know, it was it was uh, very needed because it felt like, man, we haven't been doing much, and now there's like this, we're actually gonna be able to do what we love to do again. And also, there was a lot of you know uh, roadblocks, and there was a lot of challenges because we were in the height of of of, of the pandemic. Uh, we needed to have. Uh, uh, COVID compliance officers and testing and, and oh, you know, wow. so, you know, there's a lot of money, a lot of money and a lot of effort that had to go into the planning of it. And, you know, so it was, it was a challenge, but it was an amazing challenge. And, and having Sylvia Ray as like the, the, the captain of the ship, it was like, man, what a leader, what a leader this was. I mean, women are leaders they're mothers they're they keep the family together they you know what i'm saying they yeah. they, they they keep us moving so it's yep. not really a it's not really a surprise but just in the way that she did it and the way that she kept the even keel throughout the whole thing it was an incredible process and i learned so much from her which is another huge part of of making your own project right is you you learn from other artists other people that are doing it and uh so it, it, it's really been a blessing honestly uh, yeah it, it looks amazing man it, when did it uh debut when did it premiere uh it premiered in may of 2022 <laughs> sorry okay i'm thinking of the years here uh yeah uh april 2022 we got into our first festival which was uh the arizona uh film festival which was on its 30th uh, run 30th year and we actually won best comedy at, at our first festival which was amazing uh yeah. and uh we've been uh, we've been on the circuit ever since amazing man amazing what was most challenging for you marco as far as you mean because you start in it and you, you know performed and then you, you know you were producing uh you wrote it uh, talk about you know how all these different roles, these different hats you wore, uh, was it challenging for you? Was it seamless? Uh, how was that process, you know, wearing all these different hats for Preggers, man? Well, you know, this, on this particular project on Preggers, it had, this would be the third time that I wrote and produced and acted in a film. So oh. the first two, the first two that I did, I really learned a lot about how I function wearing multiple hats and how I have to kind of com uh, compartmentalize each job. So like when it's pre-production and I'm writing, I'm a writer, I'm a writer first and, and I service the story, right? Like the story is the most important, having everything on point with the script is what's important. And then once that's done, it's the producer hat of, all right, now who am I gonna get to put this team together? Who's gonna direct it? Who is gonna be the DP or who are the actors that I wanna include in this? Uh, so then I stick to that tightly bringing on this experience, uh, bringing Sylvia Ray in, it was great because she allowed me to, you know, once we started shooting, I was strictly an actor. I wasn't, and we made that, we made that agreement 
in the beginning, which was great for me because in the past, in past projects, I was all three things while I was also acting and I could tell that my performance suffered, which was a problem. You know what I mean? Like I'm doing all this work to be able to be in front of the camera, yet all this other work was impeding my ability to really give my full attention to the performance at that time. Mm. So with this project, it was like, nah, it's each step is, is different and, and each role for me will be delegated to what point we're in in the production. Yeah. So when, when it's the writing, it's the writing, the producing, the producing, and when it's the acting, strictly the acting. And so that really made it easy for me to uh, stay focused, not get overwhelmed, and to really uh, give the best of me and all three sides of, of, of the production. And yeah, man, this this definitely was, uh, I feel like my strongest, uh, my strongest just performance overall with everything uh, 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 in this production for sure. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm really, I'm really proud of it. And, um, it, it, you know, it's been building to this moment. And now, you know, Priggers has, uh, you know, got legs and has a life of its own and has been opening a lot of doors uh, for me. And, uh, yeah, I'm just, just really excited about it, honestly. It just makes me more hungry to create more. Yeah, no doubt, yeah. man. No doubt. And where could we, where could it uh, one C Priggers? Well, uh, right now, uh, our next festival is going to be at the official Latino uh, Film Festival, which is going to be in Palm Springs. Uh, very excited for that. Uh, it's our we're screening Sunday, December 11th at 11 uh, in Palm Springs. So if y'all can make it out, that'd be amazing. It's going to be it's going to be an amazing festival for sure. Wow. Yeah. Which, what's the date on that? December what? I'm sorry. December 11th. December. Oh, that's coming up. That's uh, next Sunday, week. Sunday, December eleventh. Uh, yep, eleven a.m. is when we're screening. And then, uh, well, we we still have a couple of other festivals that we are waiting to hear back from, and uh, hopefully, we have a couple more in L.A. We just had one. Uh, la, la, man, sorry, time time is not my strong suit. But uh, last weekend, yeah, last weekend we were at the Panamanian Film Festival. Uh, that's run by uh, Carlos Carrasco, who plays Popeye in uh, in Blood In Blood Out. Popeye, yeah. uh, hey, give me that chong chong. <laughs> <laughs> the most famous line of. Oh my anybody. gosh! Oh man, my gosh! They still make right? memes. They still make memes of this man. Uh, you know, there's memes <laughs> of him. Like he will, he will live forever, but Popeye. <laughs> That's, oh my gosh, man! That, that's uh, that's funny, man. Yeah, uh, that's the one of the greatest lines in cinema history, man. Oh, Seriously, one of the man. greatest lines, man. It's it's hilarious. Oh shit! Yeah, so that's great, man. So right, so it's basically in the film festival circuit at the moment. Yeah, right now we're in the circuit, and then you know once we finish our run, we'll, we'll hopefully find a home for it. Uh, I know Chicano Hollywood has their streaming services that are starting up, so. You know, maybe you could find it there. We'll see. Hopefully, uh, we'll find a home for it. Oh, wow, man. That's, yeah, congratulations on that, man. I, Thank I know. you. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely, man. And, and then you got, uh, you know, an upcoming project, uh, Safe House, which is directed by Paul Street. Yes. And talk about the this, this upcoming project for next year, man. It's based in Mexicali and Imperial Valley of California. And um, it sounds amazing, man. I was reading up on it. And. And uh, it will tell, tell us about your role and, and, and all of that good stuff, man. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah. Uh, so Safe House uh, is an incredible project that uh, came my way through uh, James Bonafilio, who is actually from my hometown. Uh, oh. And he is. Yeah, so he's working with uh, Paul Street on some other projects. And uh, he reached out to me and said, hey, you know, I got this project. Are you interested? I read the script and I loved it. It was a genre that we know very well, but flipped upside down, told through a strong female uh, protagonist uh, that we follow through this film. And uh, I play her brother 
who is an informant who gets uh who gets her into trouble and she finds herself stuck in this in this tunnel uh and she she makes her way to the united states and is stuck in a fbi safe house trying to make her way back to mexico and so uh uh you know i thought it was very interesting that you know a lot of times we feel like all uh latino films are you know everyone wants to come to the united states and like the dream is to be here but this particular character is a is a, a, a medical student in Mexico. She has her life there. She wants to be there, you know. And so I thought that was very interesting. And uh, the shoot was actually amazing because we got to go to Calexico and Mexicali wow. and shoot in the neighborhoods right there. So we shot a shootout scene in one of these neighborhoods in Mexicali. It was the most incredible experience I ever had acting because all the neighborhood came out to watch. They were like, what's going on over here, you know? Yeah. And and so we had an audience, live audience, while we're shooting this uh, gunfight scene in Mexicali. And when we were done, you know, people were applauding. They're like, oh, no, what's going on? Like, it, it, it was incredible, incredible. And just the... The generosity and the and the uh, camaraderie of the people there, you know, yeah. uh, and the way they supported us was amazing. It, it was a beautiful experience, honestly. Wow, man! Was it summertime when you shot this? It was summertime. It was, oh no, actually, actually, uh, it wasn't summertime, but it felt like summertime. Oh, <laughs> it was. Uh, yeah, it was actually in October, but it was hot as heck. It was, it still was hot. hot as heck. It was hot as heck. Yeah. 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 I've been to Mexicali, man. Shout out to Cachetla, Los Cachanillas. Right? Hey. And uh, yeah, but it's, it's, it's I was there in the summer. And yeah. It, it gets hot for sure. Oh, uh, it's hot. It, I'm telling you, it was hot in October. It felt like it felt like summer. Wow. Yeah. yeah. We had a we had a scene uh, that we shot in a junkyard and it was just, you know, dirt and junk car parts. And it was it was like a hundred and something degrees out here. <laughs> so yeah, man. I felt like I was back in Arizona. No doubt, man. No doubt, man. Carlos, I I mean, uh, Marco, you you, I mean, I, I bet you you're very proud of you know what you've done, man. And I know I know you're you feel like you probably I would imagine you uh, you're just scratching the surface, right? Um, tell us about or what would you what would you tell somebody? who wants to get into the business have no clue how to do it you know they don't know where to start what course of action should they take man what, how would you advise someone who, who wants to get into the business as an actor man what, what would you tell that person i would say uh to reach out to uh people that they may know that's in the industry and if you don't know anyone like i did um I think social media now is very helpful in these type of things where you can find people like, you know, if anyone has any type of questions for me, I'm happy to always answer them because I didn't ever have anybody to answer the questions for me. I just really was trial and error and asking mm -hmm. questions and meeting people. I feel like networking is a huge part of this thing. Like I, I fought it for a long time, you know, but mm -hmm. who you know actually really does matter. You know, and the way you treat people actually really does matter. And your reputation as a person, as an actor, as a professional really matters. So uh, I, I would say, you know, seek people out who you feel are doing what you want to do, who are accessible. They're out there. Do research. Yeah. Read a lot. You know, it took it took a lot of reading. It took a lot of things, looking up things on the Internet and um. I think the number one thing, though, is make sure that you truly, truly love this this industry, because there are a lot of moments where things don't go your way. There's a lot of times where it seems like it's impossible, like there is no way that you're going to reach your goals. Uh, so the only thing for me that has pulled me through is my love of this industry, the love of the art of acting, just the art of it. If you're trying to be famous, 
wrong game. I would say, you know, try to make YouTube videos, try to be an IG uh, character or whatever. Like, that's cool. But yeah. in terms of the acting, it's a whole different, cr it's a craft, it's a profession. You know, mm. uh, it should be business show because really the business side of it is more important than the actual acting part. <laughs> if you if you can't be on set on time, if you don't know how to hold the conversation, if you don't know the history of the game and the people that came before you and the films that have changed this industry for what it is now, mm. it's gonna be, it, I mean, it, there's always a way, but it's more difficult, you know? So when you arm yourself with knowledge, and passion, I feel like there's no stopping. Mm, love that, man. Love that. Yeah, yeah. It, you know, yeah, you you know, people, you know, they might get into it with, with the wrong intentions, right? Or like you said, if you want to get famous, it's probably probably not the thing for you, man. And, yeah, probably I mean it's it's tough. It's tough if that's what if that's what the goal is, because uh it, the the numbers are are not in the in your favor. Yeah, no doubt. You you have to. I mean, treat it like a like a, a profession that it is. Like you said, man, Absolutely. it's like, you got to approach it as a professional. You got to hone your craft. You got to do your due diligence. Um, I mean, everything you just mentioned, man, it's it's so true. And um, what what is it for you, Marco? When, what do you want someone to take from your any project, any performance that you that you touch? Uh, what do you want the audience to take away from a Marco Parra as a from anything like as a writer, as a performer, as a producer? What what is what do you want them to take from you, man? My passion. Mm -hmm. I feel like I want my passion to come through in everything that I do uh, because I, I I take it seriously and I love it so much and I, I I try to pay it the proper respect always. So. My passion, I feel like, is my strong suit. I feel like that's my my armor, you know. That's that's my motor. Is is my passion for this. So uh, if that comes through with everything that I do, then I feel like that'll inspire others. And for me, that's just an incredible feeling. I yeah, I, I get that sense from you, man. It's uh. You know you're very passionate about this, and you know this is not some gimmick for you. This is this is life for you, this man. Is, this is life. I mean, yeah. I, for me, it's my profession, my hobby, my love, my. You know what I mean? And it, you don't necessarily have have to have, feel that way. It's just for me. That's how I. That's how I feel. That's how I feel. Yeah, but but why not? Why not do what you love, right? Why not do what you're passionate about? Why not? Yeah. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, they always say like if you if you find something you're passionate at, you're gonna find a way to make a living off that. You know, find what you're passionate about, exactly. and you can make it happen. Exactly, exactly, man. I want to I want to go to the comments comments real quick, Marco. Uh, awesome ended up being uh, Carlos Ramirez. And, oh uh, he, yeah, yeah, <laughs> Carlos. And uh, he said that he's, he's a great, great actor, by the way. I'm so sorry. He's a great actor, by the way. Oh, awesome, man. He, yeah, I'll post his comment, man. It's Carly. He wants to say, hey, I'm very proud of Marco and wish him the best. So glad to know he about this podcast and the light that this brings to actors who can feel illuminated from this. Nice comment. comment. Thank you, Carlos, for tuning in, man. He said that uh, also Sandra says hello. Hello. So... Yeah, man, I appreciate everybody. You know, my love to 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 them, and uh, thank you for for listening. Absolutely, man. And back to Ralph, your humbleness is inspiring. And uh, yeah, man, we absolutely. really absolutely, man. Osvaldo Guerra. Hey, that's my brother. Oh, really? I mean, like my my soul oh, brother. <laughs> brother, <from> brother. <laughs> yes, yeah, exactly. Yeah, man. So. Yeah, everybody, I, you know, everybody sees the the humility, the passion, the love of what you do, man. Marco, man, I, I'm going to continue to, you know, connect with you, stay connected, brother. And, and you know, I, I'm going to be picking your brain a lot, man, you know, and 
uh, hopefully we get to work with one day. And I got to work with Manny already and, and, and Ralph. And, you know, um, if you needed someone to audition for you, I'm here. Hey, but, I already uh, told you, we're, we're going to make it happen. It's happening. I appreciate we're you. We're working man. together. And uh, I appreciate you having me on, man, and, and the support. And, and uh, you know, just giving me a platform to speak my mind. And, you know, like I said, I, I love that you are about inspiring others. And, uh, you know, because that's what I feel like I'm all about. And so, you know, whatever I can do to help in that mission, I'm always down. So I'm always open to you, my friend, and to anybody, you know, if I have any uh, wisdom or knowledge to impart, man, it's the... It's, uh, it's for everybody. Absolutely, man. And, and yeah, like, you, and I, 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 uh, I contacted you in the past, and yeah, you were right, right on it, man. You gave me some pointers. You gave me some re uh, referrals for headshots and stuff like that, man. I appreciate you, man. And absolutely. But, but yeah, you know, and I, I, I just want to connect with good people, man. And I'm glad, I'm glad I, I got to know you, man. And so, Thanks. appreciate you, brother. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you for providing the space. Absolutely, man. Absolutely, man. And before we go, man, tell tell the good people out there where can they connect with you? Uh, where can they see your, some of your work? IMDb, you know, all that good stuff, man. Social media. I'm a, I'm I'm on my uh, IMDb. If you look up my name, Marco Antonio Parra. Uh, everything pretty much lives on Instagram, where I'm uh, Marco A Parra P A R R A underscore. Uh, so, you know, if you want to send me any messages, ask me any questions, always open to helping out however I can. And, um, yeah. There it is, man. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, there you have Marco Parra, actor, performer, writer, producer, extraordinaire. Uh, go check him out. Go connect with him. He's doing some amazing work. And he's only getting started, baby. He's just getting started, if you ask me. So, uh, once again, bro, hey, thank you for being here, man. I'll, I'll see you soon. All right, my yeah. friend. Absolutely, man. I want to thank everybody in the comment section uh, for being here. Ralph, it's great to, to see you, man, and, and uh, digitally. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hopefully, I'll be seeing you soon in real life. And uh, big shout out to everyone, you know, Osvaldo and, and Carlos, Sandra, everybody who tuned in. And uh, so, yeah, thanks again, man. Connect with me on Instagram at the profile pod. Leave me a rate review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, you know, subscribe to the channel right here on YouTube. There's one way you can support. Um, subscribe. Hit that subscribe button there at the bottom right hand corner of your, of your screen, and show some love. Man. I appreciate it. So, once again, for Marco Parra, I'm Double A. We'll be back next time here on the Profile Pod, and always reminding you to take it easy. Peace.